the ultimate guide to kayak fishing starting now. Buckle your seatbelts, we have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. The topics I'll be covering today is one, how to pick out a kayak, kayak fishing gear guide basics, kayak fishing safety measures, common beginner mistakes, some kayak bass fishing tips, some things I wish I would have known earlier in the sport, my favorite DIY kayak modifications, and my favorite fishing kayak upgrades. Welcome to the sport of kayak fishing. It is absolutely blowing up. New kayak fishermen are coming online every single day, and if you clicked on this video, you probably one of them. I'm gonna skip over begging you for likes and subs. Let's get this party started. I'm gonna be cruising today. I mean like flying in through this stuff. So if you have a question about it, throw it down in the comments. Likely I've done another in-depth video on some of the topics I'm talking about today. Let's start with number one, how to pick out a kayak. Here's the thing, fishing kayaks are expensive and if you're gonna be dropping a ton of cash, you should be able to try it out like you would a car. Try before you buy, that's the name of the game here. I'd hate for you to be stuck with something that's super uncomfortable after the fact. So there's a few things to take into consideration here. Some stores won't let you try before you buy, but here's the thing, you have the leverage, you have the cash. There's plenty of stores out there selling fishing kayaks. Two, you could buy used, that's what I did. I bought mine off a of Marketplace, my Native Slayer Propel 10. You can ask that guy or girl to meet you at the local pond and you can try it out just make sure you do research so you don't end up with a lemon some stores actually have ponds on the property that you can try your kayak on so I do a little research there might be one near you and if a store has a kayak that you can't find anywhere else maybe you can check into the return policy it may be generous just know if it's a full refund or a store credit and finally a lot of kayak stores have demo days so do your research if you're not in a big hurry to buy one you can try out a ton of different kayaks during these days you don't want to have buyers remorse after a 15 hundred dollar purchase trust me all right let's move on to the basic gear guide I have three must-haves and three nice to have must-haves number one you might actually need to register your kayak in your state it varies from state to state so you might want to do a little research on this and I also know that the laws change often on this I know in Ohio your kayak is considered a vessel so you need to register it thank you Ohio for this giant sticker all right number two must have a personal flotation device and you have a couple choices here one you get your standard PFD which I'm not a big fan of and the other option is a low profile PFD and there's pros and cons to both the reason I don't like big bulky the standard PFD is because I don't need all the extra storage I have a lot of undersea storage and other places on my kayak I used to use and I fish in the middle of the summer it gets hot I don't want something really bulky on me. I wear a low profile PFD it has a little co2 cartridge and don't worry about it. if it rains it's not gonna blow up in your face you have to fully fall in the water for that thing to be able to uh, explode not explode the bad word for it to be able to inflate the downside of a low profile is a little bit more expensive than your standard but hey this is personal preference either way you're gonna need a personal flotation device so grab one or the other and if you're interested in the low profile I did a video I'll throw it in the description below and number three must have is a paddle and here's my recommendation if you have a pedal power kayak you don't need to invest a whole lot into a paddle you can however if you are primarily powering your kayak through a paddle I would highly recommend not spending less than $60 on a paddle and you're gonna to get a carbon fiber your paddle is not where you're gonna to want to save some cash paddle prices and that spectrum can go from $60 for a carbon fiber on the low end all the way up to 250 I'll throw the one I like in the description below next I'm gonna cover the three nice to haves and the first one is a kayak crate with rod holders there's a lot of different options here you can purchase one and the prices are all over the place or you can make one which is a ton of fun which is what I decided to do and actually did a video on this I'll throw it in the description below your kayak crate's gonna hold your tools your horn your tackle your anchor your stringer your lunch whatever all right, number two nice to have it is a net. Just kidding, I don't carry a net on my kayak. There is not enough room on the kayak, not enough real estate to be carrying a net, so I carry fish grips instead. The reason I prefer fish grips over a net is because they're cheaper than a net, they float, they take up less room on your kayak, you can't get your hooks caught in. And what I love about fish grips is that whenever you catch a big fish, instead of letting it flopping around the bottom of your boat, risking injury, I put them on the fish grip, I have the fish grip leashed to my kayak, and I put the fish back in the water as I get my camera ready to take that photo. Here's the thing, you can purchase leashes if it's good at Walmart, or you can make some for really cheap. So I have a video on that, I'll also put it in the description below. And then number three, nice to have, is get a fish finder. Guys, now that you have a kayak, stop acting like a bank fisherman. Use your kayak to an advantage 
should take out some of the guesswork. And Fish Finder is going to do a variety of things for you. Obviously, it's going to locate the fish. However, it's going to do a few other things as well. If you enjoy trolling, you're going to want to know the depth of what you're fishing in so you don't end up catching the bottom of the lake all the time. Sometimes I fish really muddy water and I'm in three feet of water and I think I'm in seven. Well, that changes the fishing game. And also, Fish Finder is going to tell you how fast you're going. So if you're trolling for fish, you're going to want to know this to know what that perfect speed is that the crappie and that the bass are biting on. And a pro tip for you, I wouldn't spend less than $120 on a fish finder. I have a variety of reasons. Well, I'm actually creating a video in my queue right now. So if you're not subbed, hit that sub and bell notification and you get notified when it comes out here in a few weeks. All right, really quick, let's talk about basic kayak fishing safety measures. I'm not going to go through a lot of detail here, but there are some things you should know before you head out into the water. And you might want to do some extra research if you're scratching your head as I name off some of these. All right, number one, you want to learn how to write your yak. You want to know how to do a deep water re-entry. If you're kayak fishing alone and, or solo and you don't know how to get back into your boat or if you never tried this before, I highly recommend staying close to shore or only fishing on calm days. You might be thinking to yourself, Darren, I'm just going to hop right back in this thing. Well, it's not as easy as you think. And if you haven't done it before, you might want to practice. Number two, know the weather forecast. You don't want to be an hour away when bad weather hits and have a hard time getting back to the dock. And I don't know about you, but I get really excited about fishing and my litmus test is really low on whether or not I'm going to go. I wake up in the morning. <sighs> I'm breathing today. Yeah, good day to go fishing. You might be thinking, yeah, Darren, I checked the weather report, but what I want you to specifically look into is the wind. A lot of time when we check the weather report, we're just looking whether or not it's going to rain. I just did a video on how windy is too windy, and I kind of geek out a bit on this video. And I cover a variety of different things, like if you're a salt life guy, knowing your rip currents and your tides. Notice your tailwinds. You gotta make sure you have the energy to get back. You don't wanna be out 30 minutes and be like having the time of your life and turning around and realizing that you're going so fast because there was a wind at your back. Let someone know where you're going to be. Be prepared for those weather conditions conditions. Actually, be prepared for immersion. Keep a bag of clothes back in your car. Keep a knife on your body. Stay hydrated and plan your trip around your skill sets and your abilities and limitations. I cover a few other things like always having a horn on board or a whistle, having a waterproof communication device, having a tow line available, and more. So check out that video if you're interested in any of those things. All right, now let's move into rookie mistakes that I made and you can avoid. The first one is underestimating the sun. And I'm not talking about the sun on your skin. I'm talking about the sun on your kayak. The the reality is those UV rays destroy just about anything under the sun. If you don't believe me, just ask my hot tub cover. And they can do some serious damage to your fishing kayak that just cost you a couple grand. You see, your fishing kayaks are likely made from polyethylene, one of the most popular plastics in the world. And when UV rays hit polyethylene, two things happen. One, the color fades, like the first row of the video store, and over time, the plastic becomes brittle. So if you notice you're starting to get some cracks in your kayak, it might have less to do with the manufacturing and how it's built and more to do with how you're storing it. So two things you can do here. One, store it out of the sun and make sure if you're storing it inside, make sure a window is not hitting it. It's going to fade those colors. And two, use protectant. I love 303 Aerospace protectant. It's pretty expensive, but it really does the trick. I also use it on my hot tub cover and it does magic. So I will throw that in the description below. If you haven't bought your kayak yet, you might want to think about the color. Most of the time when we purchase the kayak, we're thinking, oh yeah, that looks awesome. And what we're not thinking about is how other watercraft would be able to see us. Some of your great colors are your high vis colors, your greens, your yellows, your oranges. Some of the worst colors out there are actually white. A lot of times you just blend in with the glare of the sun or camouflage, which you can kind of be lost in the horizon, especially if there's a forest behind you. So take that into consideration when purchasing your yak. I know you might be thinking, well, how can they miss me? I'm, I'm super long. Well, a lot of times that might not be the profile other watercraft can see you. They might only see you straight on, which is a really narrow profile. If you don't have a high-vis kayak, I would use a flag to throw that up on the back of your kayak so you can be seen by other watercraft. I have an option for you in the description below. Here's another rookie mistake. Whenever you're tying down your kayak, be really careful. I bought mine in Pittsburgh, and so I had to drive two hours away to get it and come back and I took every strap that I owned with me. Strapped that thing down and it made a racket coming home. Sound like there was a hornet's nest above my head. Well the problem is all that vibration whenever the strap met my kayak it vibrated so much it created enough friction to melt my kayak. If you're going to get a kayak or you're going long distances with your kayak make sure to put a piece of cardboard whenever that strap hits your kayak so it doesn't melt. Another mistake that I made is I didn't put a keel guard on my kayak soon enough and I really did some damage. A lot of these things are fully loaded can be over a 
400 pounds plus your weight. So when you ram that into a rock or some concrete, it's gonna scrape some of that plastic off and there's only so much there. I actually did a video on this. I did a lot of research on what the best DIY cue guard out there is and I came up with Kydex. If you wanna learn how to create a DIY Kydex keel guard, they're not that expensive. I'll throw that video in the link below. So we'll switch gears a little bit to some kayak bass fishing mistakes I made. Because the game changes when you're out in the kayak versus standing on the side of the bank. Now that you're in a kayak and not on a bank, you really gotta keep a low profile. You gotta be super quiet, because that's what's gonna spook those fish. Now I fish in Northeast Ohio, and I fish on this lake a lot of times, and these bald eagles come down and snatch bass all the time. Bass are super aware about what's going on above their heads. So a few tips for keeping a low profile are these. Turn off your trolling electric motor if you have one on your yak. Slowly pedal into your fishing holes if you have a pedal power kayak. And like most kayak fishermen, you have a paddle and you gotta be really careful of how much noise you're making in the water and also when you bang that thing up against your boat. You're not doing your fishing game any favors if you do that. The best way to get that bass bite is to make that cast before that bass ever knows you're there. Guys, this stuff really matters. And number two is key your distance. There is a tendency for bass anglers to get as close as they possibly can so they can see the fish, but this actually works against you. You don't need to shake hands with a thing. You just gotta be able to make out the outline of the bass, and the further away you can do that, the better chances you're gonna have of catching it. Having a pair of quality optics are gonna help you here, but also keep in mind your kayak position. If it's possible, your best position is gonna be where the sun is behind you. If you've been fishing for any amount of time, you're probably pretty deadly with your cast. You can put it just about anywhere. And now that you're in a kayak, you can start doing some bed fishing. Well, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll take it and we'll land it right in the middle of the bed and you spook all the fish. So the idea here is to overcast your lure. So if you see where the fish is, throw it a few feet over, dance that right through the bed and get that reaction bite. All right, let's move on to our next section. A few things I wish I would have known earlier in the sport. And number one is do your research, have a plan. You're no longer a bank fisherman and you're not stuck to fishing one particular spot. You can now explore the entire lake and with new freedom comes the advantage and with advantage comes a little wisdom and that wisdom should be a plan all right here's some tips of what I do a week before I go fishing I actually go online and download the topographical map for the lake I will then research the water temperature then I'll start reading blogs of other fishermen that are currently catching fish on the lake and how they're doing it then I'll determine the variety of lures I'm going to take with me and I'll preset them up the day before I take a lot of that information and I try to determine where they're going to be suspended then I'll circle all the spots on the map Map that I want to fish where the fish should be and then I map it out how I'm gonna spend my day then what I always try to do is head over to the deep dive app because it's gonna help me expand my lures if you're gonna like me I spend about 95% using the same exact wacky worm that I always catch fish on but I want to become a better fisherman I want to be able to learn how to use all the other different lures in my tackle box so head over to the deep dive app and it's really gonna show you some really great ways to do this now that you have a plan you're not guessing anymore you just increase your chances of landing fish. All right, let's move on to another mistake I made, not having the right tools on board. If you don't follow this word of advice, you could really ruin a really great day out on the water. So what I recommend is before you head out to the water, check your fishing kayak and make sure you have every single tool you would need to fix any problem that would arise. Like I said, I have a native Slayer Propel 10. I know I need a certain hex wrench um, because my drive arms sometimes get a little loose. I know I need a Phillips head screwdriver and there's a few other tools I always carry with me and put it in my kayak crank. It only took me one ruined day out of the water to learn this lesson and hopefully you don't have to learn it as well. I actually just finished the video, 10 tools I always take with me kayak fishing and that comes out in a couple days. Here's another rookie mistake I made, get some landing gear and there's a variety of different options here. And here's my recommendations, take it or leave it. If you have a kayak that's under 35 pounds, you don't need to spend a lot of money on these. Uh, you can actually, there's a variety of DIY videos out there if you want to create it yourself or you just go to Walmart, I think for $45 you can get a really cheap wheel landing gear. So so you can pull your kayak to and from the water. If you have a kayak that's over 35 pounds, it's gonna start getting really heavy really fast. And what I found is those type of cheap setups are not gonna be great for you. Just bite the bullet, pay for the nice landing gear, and I highly recommend the pneumatic wheels. You're gonna want those wheels to take the brunt of all the rocks and all of the roots on your way to your favorite fishing hole. The next point is unless you love making sacrifices to the fishing gods, I highly recommend leashing all your crap, leashing your rods if you want to, your clippers, your fish grips, your pliers, whatever you don't want to lose to the bottom of the lake. I know that if I were to flip my kayak right now, I would lose over a thousand dollars worth of gear. And pro tip, if your wife or significant other won't let you buy any more fishing gear, you might not want to leash anything and act 
accidentally tip over your boat. I mean, it would be unreasonable not to replace it, right? Come on. Uh, here's another thing I wish someone would have told me before I started kayak fishing is to practice defensive kayaking. And you might have seen there's a ton of videos out there where boats are coming, close calls, hitting kayaks, jet skiers harassing kayakers. And regardless of fault, you are the smallest vessel and you're going to be moving the slowest. So I'd highly recommend practicing some defensive kayaking. I wouldn't mess with fishing kayakers too much. I actually did a poll on my community and I asked the question, what do you carry for protection while kayak fishing? And this are your responses. 31% are actually packing heat, 37% carry knife, 2% got some hands on them, 6% of them said by the look of them, you don't want to mess around, and 24% said nothing, which to be honest with you, those are the ones you need to worry about. And the number one thing I wish someone would have told me, if you want to catch bass, I mean consistently, there is one way to do it, especially if you're new to kayak fishing, it's learning the wacky worm. And I'm not talking about learning how to set up the wacky worm, learn how to fish it. There's a lot of nuances to it, but if you can master it, you will land bass consistently. Three, four, five, six pound bass using the wacky worm. I actually have a video of that, I'll throw it in the description below as well. All right, let's talk about some of my favorite DIY mods as we come down the back stretch. There's a few of my favorites. We already talked about the kayak crate with rod holders, the keel guard. If you're planning on filming any of your fishing, then I highly recommend a DIY boom mount. I'm actually doing a video of all the different angles that you can do and how to set those up with GoPros and chest mounts and over the shoulder mounts and bow mounts. So that video will be coming out here in a few weeks as well. And one of the things I did for DIY is I didn't like how slow my kayak turned. So I actually put an extended rudder on it. Now you can buy a boondocks extended rudder or you can take the rudder that you own right now put a little extra plastic on it and make faster turns so highly recommend that one all right one of my favorite upgrades is the yak attack pro mega rod holders these things are awesome it's a thing i get tired after casting for six hours and sometimes i just need a break or i need to make a phone call so i'll go out in the middle of the lake put two of my rods on my rod holders and pedal around with my pedal kayak and you'd be surprised how many bass how many crappie and even catfish i pick up by trolling surprise surprise I did a video on these rod holders and so I'll throw that in the description below as well. Another upgrade is a behind the seat backpack. Guys, you can just go to Walmart, find one for 20 bucks and you get a ton of storage space on your yak, which is really awesome considering there's not a lot of real estate in these things. One of my favorite upgrades on my native Slayer Propel 10 is my under the seat storage. I have a Craftsman Versa stack. I know DeWalt makes one just like it. These things are awesome just to be able to reach under your seat, pull out a drawer. There's two of them and you can have everything that you want in there all your terminal tackle your lighter your I store my knife in there I have my digital scale these things are awesome so you're not trying to reach around and dig through your kayak crate just having all the things you use all the time right below you they can run a pretty penny but you're gonna love it all right, I know we we're cruising through that and I referenced a ton of videos which are gonna be in this playlist right here